Welcome to our flashlight and smoke usage on screen section. Um, in this particular section, we're going to teach you how to use several different types of flashlights as well as how to use smoke on screen. This is probably one of the most self explanatory sections that we're going to discuss here. So I'm going to pretty much just let it play out because it's really easy to figure out exactly what's going on. We're just going to use um, five different flashlights and show you what they're going to look like on screen and the fact that if you don't have any smoke, essentially you're just not going to see any light coming out of that flashlight. You're going to see the effect of it, you're going to see it lighting somebody's face, but you won't see the beam, which is very, very important for it to be sold as being a real flashlight lighting somebody inside of a room. And it's going to be most prevalent when it's shining in the direction of the camera. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how much smoke do you need so you can see a flashlight doing something like this. See how it traces the path of the flashlight. You can actually see the path of the light. Um, it's more cinematic. It feels right. It feels like, you know, when the police are kind of breaking into a room and they're going to, you know, look for the bad guy, the, the flashlights are going all over the place. What do you need to make this? Um, a $30 fog machine right there is really all you need to make this in a pretty large room. This is a pretty large studio, and we are filling it up with smoke for about $30 right there. Um, you get the smoke in there, make sure you get enough to actually fill up the room. Then you come in and you actually fan it with, let's say, a flag or a piece of cardboard until it's just the right consistency. And we'll show you later on what kind of consistency we're looking for to get it just right. First one is going to be a 2AA cell xenon, just a regular mag light. It burns at about 3200 degrees Kelvin, which is standard, you know, kind of tungsten interior illumination lights. Um, it puts out very little energy, nowhere near as much as some of the other flashlights you're going to see here. We're primarily showing it to you as a baseline, just so you can kind of understand that that's where most of the flashlights that we own in our home are about at this level right here. And it's just not going to cut it. It's not going to make that effect of a beam cutting through the fog or the mist or the smoke inside of a room looking for the bad guy. It's just not going to cut it. Um, it's very, very weak. You need to buy a more specialized flashlight. You don't have to do it anymore like the old days. You have to run wires up somebody's sleeve, but you do have to buy a better flashlight. This is a 2CR123A cell 5 LED flashlight. It actually has five purple LEDs inside it um, that are creating that kind of a floodlight right there. And it uses two CR123A batteries, which are your standard kind of lithium end size batteries that you use for photographic purposes, like in photographic cameras. They are some of the most efficient, most powerful batteries that you can buy. However, they're very, very expensive. They're about $5.99 a piece. And you need two of them to power a flashlight like that for about, let's just say, 10 hours or so. Um, so what I would recommend is if you have a flashlight that uses those kind of batteries, buy the rechargeable kind. You can buy a cradle with two batteries and the charger power supply for about $25, which will give you about a thousand cycles of recharging, which is a lot cheaper in the long run than buying these disposable batteries. And of course, it's better for the environment as well, too. And this is what they're going to give you. Look at the power of this flashlight. This is another type of flashlight that uses the exact same two batteries as the last LED light, but it gives you eight watts of energy, which is a lot when it's concentrated in a tiny, tiny little area, and also with that very powerful reflector. Now notice how you can actually see the wisps of the smoke when he holds his flashlight up into, the, into that area right there. That's too much smoke. The atmosphere is just not right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more smoke, we're gonna fan it a little bit to kind of spread it out a little bit more so it's not so concentrated in one area, and then you can actually see the wisps of it um, that kind of gives away the idea or the fact that you actually have smoke in that room. It ceases to be atmosphere and it turns into smoke, like there's something on fire. So at that point, you have to stop. You fan the smoke a little bit, spread it out a little bit more. And then when you have your actor come back in with a flashlight, then it looks right. So now back to the 8-watt xenon flashlight. As we were saying, this is a police flashlight. Puts out 8 watts of light with the same two batteries. Gives you about one hour of runtime only. So it's 10 times more usage of power than the LED flashlight. This is pretty much the standard by which you can measure all these police flashlights, and it can be had for about $50. It's not really very expensive, but that, that's what's going to give you that very focused beam, a really nice kind of uh, piercing beam that goes through the, the smoke. However, you can also get a 1-watt LED light like this one, which puts out, I mean, it's seemingly a lot of energy as well, too, or you can get the 3-watt version of the same light, uh, but this one lasts for 40 hours. So it is 40 times more efficient than that 8 watt LED. And also the 3 watt version of this will put out almost as much illumination, as many lumens as the 8 watt Xenon police flashlight, which is 3200 degrees Kelvin. And of course, this is daylight balance. So depending on the type of lighting that you're using, if you're using HMIs and you want your flashlight to look white, you might want to use an LED light. 
if you're using HMI lighting but you want your flashlight to look yellow, you might end up using a xenon bulb instead. This right here is a fireman's flashlight. It uses four C cells, which are the larger cells than the double A's um, or the, the CR123A. So they're, it's a lot larger flashlight. It's much more bulky to use. Um, it actually has less wattage than that little police uh, xenon flashlight that we already saw. This one already has 7.2 watts, whereas the other one actually had 7.8 watts. So the little guy is a lot more powerful. The major difference, of course, is that this one has batteries that will last a lot longer than that little police flashlight, but it is a lot more bulky. Make sure that if you're going to use flashlights and you want to get that kind of police look in the frame, get the smaller one, the one that's 7.8 watts and has batteries that only last for about an hour because it's going to give you a much more focused, tight beam that looks a lot more realistic and also is a lot less bulky for the actor to use. And he doesn't have to have, to have cables running up his sleeve anymore like they used to in the old days. Uh, going to a battery that's sitting on his belt or something like that. You can get this kind of power and flashlights these days for about $50. The last light we're going to talk about is this actual lantern. It's not really a flashlight, it's more of a lantern. It produces 15 million candle power and it can be used for a variety of situations. Just make sure that you never shine in anybody's face, it's a, especially at close proximity because it's very, very powerful and it's like a spot. Um, this is at half intensity right now. It can actually go up even higher than that. This is at half intensity. And watch when he gets in really close to him right there. I'm going to ask him to back up a little bit and give us a little bit of a different perspective. Primarily, you're going to use something like this when somebody's on the back of a pickup truck, for instance, and they're looking for somebody hiding in the bushes or something like that. And this is a searchlight. Um, but at the same time, you don't have to give it power from the, uh, from the battery on the truck. Um, you don't have to carry a generator with you. And remember, this is still operating at half intensity. You can go up even higher than that. There is a full intensity mode that you're going to see here in a moment that's really, really powerful. Now watch that. It's going to go to full power right there. You can see that it's like a laser beam almost. It's really cutting through that smoke. Just make sure, again, you don't shine it into anybody's face because it's really, really powerful. If you had four or five of these out in a field somewhere, you can really make some interesting effects if you wanted to get that kind of an effect. You can also use this light for lighting. Even though the battery is only going to last for about maybe about 45 minutes, uh, but this uh, this light is only about $30. And I mean, most people don't believe me when I say this, but you can buy this from a major department store for about $30. So if you had, um, you know, four or five or even six of these things sitting in the back of a truck, or if you had just a battery replacement for them, you can do some lighting with this at night for short periods of time. Like if you're doing like a fire light or a campfire, you can just put some gels in front of this light and actually do the fire lighting with the moonlight and everything without ever actually having to put a generator out in the middle of a field. You can see what it does even from the back of the room. I mean, they're about uh, 15 feet away from him right there, but it's still making such a powerful light that it actually makes that chair almost disappear. I mean, this is like E.T. and stuff. This is really nice kind of very spotty type of light. And you can do some really creative things with this kind of an instrument. You can even use it to fake car headlights at night or something like that. So let's go ahead and do a review of everything that we learned in this particular episode right here. This is a 2 AA cell xenon light. We said this is a pretty weak light, acts as a baseline. This is the 2 N size cell 5 LED light that's purple. This is good for like a floodlight or an effect light. This is the 2CR123A 8 watt xenon, standard police flashlight against which all must be measured. This is the 1 watt Luxion LED flashlight, which is also available in a 3 watt version. This is a 4C fireman's flashlight, has a broader beam and the batteries last a lot longer, but it's much bulkier. This is a searchlight, 15 million candle power. You can use it for lighting or as a searchlight at night. This is at full intensity, 15 million candle power, very, very powerful light, it's also extremely affordable. It's only about $30. And that'll wrap up our flashlight section.